LLMs aren't doing magic. They are just predicting what comes next in a sentence. But once you understand how that process works, you can guide these models to do exactly what you want. From writing better test cases, generating boilerplate code, debugging faster to summarizing logs. Knowing how to prompt well can save you hours. Engineers who get good at this can move faster, build smarter and use AI like a true extension of their toolkit. So in this video, we'll break down how large language models actually function, starting with their core objective, predicting the next word. We'll trace their evolution from early sequence to sequence models to transformers to today's powerful chat-based LLMs. And then we'll zoom into the heart of prompt engineering, how shaping input text can drive high quality output and how that input output loop fits in into full LLM powered applications like ChatGPT. Let's get started. At the heart of every LLM is a simple goal. Predict the next word in a sequence. That's it. You give it a prompt like, the server crashed because, and it completes it based on probabilities learned from massive amounts of text. It might say, it ran out of memory, because that's a common pattern in logs, forums, or docs. This prediction mechanism is what powers everything from writing code, summarizing emails, to simulating conversations. But they are not thinking. They are just continuing text in a way that looks smart. That's why precision matters. The way you frame a prompt directly impacts what you get back. Now, before ChatGPT and all the buzz, language models were already around for decades. But the real shift came in 2014 when Google introduced the sequence to sequence architecture. Sequence to sequence was based on RNN or recurrent neural networks, which I previously explained in my LLM crash course in detail. Basically, these models processed one token at a time and updated an internal memory after each step. And that made them good for handling sequences like sentences, paragraphs, and even full documents. And they were used for tasks like translation, classification, summarization, you name it. But they had one big limitation, the information bottleneck. Let me show you what that means. So here on the left, we feed in the input sequence, token by token. For example, look at the pretty bird. Each token is converted into an embedding, a numerical vector, and passed into the encoder. As tokens flow in, the encoder updates its internal state. This rolling state is what stores the meaning of the sentence. Once all tokens are processed, the encoder compresses everything into a single fixed length vector called the thought vector. That thought vector is passed into the decoder. It gets a special start token to begin generating the output. In this case, the translated sentence in Spanish. The decoder generates one word at a time. Say Mira, then L. Each word it produces gets fed back into the decoder to predict the next one. And finally, it reaches an end token, and that's the full output. Now here is the problem, that thought vector in the middle. It's fixed in size, no matter how long or detailed your input is. It gets squeezed into the same sized vector. So the longer the input, the more important info gets lost, making the decoder's job harder. And to fix the bottleneck in sequence to sequence, researchers tried something new. So in 2015, a paper introduced the attention mechanism. So in the older models like sequence to sequence, only the last of those hidden states called the thought vector was passed to the decoder. So all the earlier tokens meaning had to be crammed into the final state. But with attention, we don't just pass the last one. We keep all the hidden state vectors, one per input token. Then, while generating each output word, the decoder can look back at all of them. So, instead of one summary, the model has a full map of the input. And then came the real breakthrough. In 2017, Google released the paper, Attention is all you need. It said, what if you drop RNNs entirely? No more one token at a time memory updates. Instead, rely only on attention. And that's how Transformers were born. It made models faster, more parallel, and way better at capturing long-range context. Now, I have broken this down step-by-step step 
how the encoder processes inputs, how the decoder generates outputs, and how attention flows between them in my LLM crash course. So if you want the full breakdown, check that out. It will give you a solid mental model before diving deeper into prompt engineering. Basically, everything in Transformer runs in parallel, not step-by-step -step like RNNs. And that makes them much faster to train and more powerful. But there is a trade-off. Unlike sequence-to-sequence, -sequence, transformers cannot handle unlimited input. They are bound by a fixed context window. And working around that limitation is still one of the biggest engineering challenges today. But back in 2018, OpenAI took a different path. Instead of solving that problem right away, they doubled down on scaling. They introduced GPT, a transformer model trained to predict the next word using massive amounts of internet text. The architecture was simple, just the decoder side of a transformer. But the real breakthrough wasn't the structure, it was the scale of training. With GPT-2, something unexpected happened. Without task-specific training, the model started solving all kinds of language tasks, just from prompts. It could translate, summarize, answer questions, all by continuing the text you gave it. And that's when researchers realized, you don't need to fine-tune for every task. You just need to prompt it right. And this shift from fine-tuning to prompting laid the foundation for prompt engineering. Today's LLMs like GPT-4, Cloud, Llama, and Gemini keep pushing this idea further. Better models, better prompts, better results. At its core, an LLM is simple. You give it a string of text, that's the prompt. And it returns a continuation. That's the completion. For example, Say we have the prompt, the API request failed because, and the completion could be the authentication token was missing. That's it. The model just continues based on patterns it has seen during training. And that's why prompt design matters. The better your input, the more useful and accurate the output. Now let's say you give an LLM this prompt. The deployment failed during staging. Now the app won't start on. What's the most likely next word? you might get something random like this gibberish. Or maybe Monday. Not totally wrong, but odd. But most likely, production. Because that's a common real-world pattern. Most LLMs will pick that continuation. Now let's go one step further. Say the model completes it as the deployment failed during staging. Now the app won't start on production. So what's the next most probable line? Is it, let's factor the pipeline before EOD, can you check the logs on your end? Or try rolling back to the last known stable build. And the answer depends on the model's training. If it saw a lot of engineering chats and issue threads, the last one about rollback is likely. If it saw mostly emails or status updates, you might get a different tone. And if it was trained on casual Slack conversations, even the second option would make sense. The point is, LLMs guess what comes next based on data patterns, not logic or facts. The better you match your prompt to the kind of completion you want, the better results you'll get. Prompt engineering starts with writing good text, but in real-world apps, it goes much deeper. A typical LLM-based system looks like this. The user describes a problem. Your app builds a structured input, the prompt. The LLM completes that input, and then your app passes the response does something useful and sends it back to the user. That's the loop, and your job is to make that loop smart, consistent, and reliable. Prompt engineering has layers. At the basic level, like ChatGPT or Copilot, it's just wrapping user input with a bit of context. At the next level, you enrich the prompt with other data, like past conversations, open browser tabs, or search results, to improve relevance and reduce hallucinations. You also start tracking state, making the conversation contextual and memory aware. And at the advanced level, the LLMs doesn't just respond, it start taking actions. It might call APIs, check calendars, or send emails, driven entirely by structured prompt response cycles. And that's where things are getting exciting and messy. You now have to manage tool use, handle errors, pass state, and keep the loop grounded and safe. So yes, prompt engineering starts with a line of text, but at its best, it's a system, a pipeline of inputs, context, completions, and actions, 
working together to solve problems with language. In the next video, we'll turn that into a full loop, taking user input, shaping prompts, getting completions, and turning them into real results. We'll even show you how to add memory, tools, and APIs, just like Bing Chat or AutoGPT. It gets powerful and fast. Hit subscribe and let's build it together.